Almighty. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. And that the blessed, blessed are those whose strength is in you. And that they make spring, springs of water and autumn rains come. Whoa. So, Father, tonight we ask for autumn rain. We ask for springs of the presence of the Lord. And most of all, Lord, we ask that you will be glorified in this place. Say after me, blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless the Lord. Hey, whoa, what? If this is your first time at Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship, welcome. If it's not, welcome. welcome. <laughs> in either way, welcome. I know he rescued my soul, his blood covered my sin, I believe, I believe, my pain is taken away, my pain is healed in his name, I believe, I believe.
and peace of the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteous to be and restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, and still hear a voice in the desert cry, and compare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, planted on the ground, shining like the sun, as the prophet calling your voice. It's a year of jubilee. And now the time to salvation come. Salvation God. The peace are the days of Ezekiel. The trifles become an aspect. And these are the days of your servant David rebuild and the temple of praise. And these are the days of great harvest. The fields are as white in the world. And we are your neighbors, King of Israel. We are declaring the way of the Lord. Behold, we come, shining like the sun, shining like the sun, and the sun Testament that is translated into from many Hebrew words. One of them is the word Shabbat. The Shabbat is to shout. This is the type of praise that was declared around Jericho. And it's the type of praise that we're going to do here tonight. Okay? So when we say out oh, there is no God like Jehovah, this is a shout. And it's a type of praise that's very specific. It's for bringing down strongholds and all those things that raise themselves up against our Lord and God. You ready? Ready? There's no God like Jehovah. 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 These are the days of Elijah. Declare the word of the Lord. And these are the days of the servant Moses. Righteous to be and restored. And so these are days of great trials. A plan and a darkness and storm. Still with the voice in the desert. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. The old days come. We're running on the ground. Shining like a sun. As the trumpet call is your voice. If you hear us, you believe. And out of time till salvation. Now to walk again. Ready? There's no God like Jehovah. 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 I think. I think it's time we. I think it's time we got out of our seats and started.
started marching around this place with some vigor. And every step you take, you're taking new territory. Because it's a day of new territory. It's a day of new beginning. It's not right, Trish. It's a new territory. You're new territory women and men. You're new territory. And so when we get rolling along with Elijah again, and we get rolling along with Ezekiel again, let's just get rolling out and around this place. And let's not just diddle along. Let's really move it. Amen. Okay. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 These are the days of the deal. The tribe won't be called that flesh. But these are the days of the servant. They that we build in the temple of praise. And these are the days of great harvest. The fields are as white in the world. And we are your laborers in your bed. Just declare in the words of the Lord. Behold, we come, riding on the ground, riding like a sun. As the trumpet call is your voice, if you hear us to believe. Oh, 
You know, there are many words that are translated into praise. And there are many that are loud, and there are many that are soft, and there are many that are dance, and there are many that are quiet. But the place that the Lord wants to meet us is always in one place, close to his heart, close to his spirit. And the words that he wants to hear most are the words that come deep within us. As we bring forth offering before him, the best offering are the simplest offerings. When you bring songs before Him, let it flow from your heart and your soul. Let it lift up from deep within your heart. In the secret, in the quiet place, and the stillness you are there. Secret is a quiet hour of me, only for you, because I want to know you more. And I want to know you, and I want to hear your voice, and I want to I want to touch you, and I want to be your face, and I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Lift up my heart and my soul. your heart before him and let the songs begin to flow out of it. Kind of stay in the same general realm that everybody else is in musically, but bring up a word. Bring up a word before him. 
Bring forth a song deep within your heart. Sing with your spirit, sing with your mind before Him. Raise up your voice and bond the soul. To revolve me, mano. To rapala rame, mano. To rapala rame, to mana. To ramata rame. Exactly how you feel. Exactly how you feel. You've been so faithful to me. When I felt lost, you were next to me. When I was broken, you came to comfort me.
Thank you, Lord. Just stay in an attitude of worship. You know, in the Song of Solomon, it says, You are altogether lovely. You're as lovely as Jerusalem, an awesome army with banners. And that's what I've seen here tonight, the army of the Lord walking with banners. And he finds it delightful. You know, in the... um, There's a movie called First Night. And in it, um, it's the story of Camelot. And King Arthur says to Guinevere, marry the king, but love the man. And that's what we've been doing tonight. The king rejoices over us, but the man, Christ Jesus, delights in your worship. I really feel tonight that we have touched his heart. Bless you. You may be seated. How many people were here last night for the healing service? How many were healed last night? So we have maybe two or three popcorn testimonies. And when I say popcorn testimonies, say, no more than a minute, please. Come on up. Anybody else? What's your name? This is Corrine. Tell us what happened. Uh, last night I came up and I couldn't walk. The bottoms of my feet were so swollen and the pain would shoot up through my legs and I couldn't sleep at night. And it was really awesome because when John, uh, he wasn't going to pray over us individually and then he looked me straight in the eye. And it was really awesome that he looked at my name tag and it says Corrine, but he called me Corey. And that that's something very special because only my husband and a few very close people call me Corey and he would not have known that any other way. But it was really neat because like I've been walking around, I haven't been sitting in long uh, times today and normally I wouldn't be able to get up and walk. And today when I was sitting in the bathroom, I got a revelation and God was saying to me that the, the battle was with my feet because in my church I'm treading on new ground. Whoa, whoa, Father, in Jesus' name. Can we have somebody just to soak, Corey? Whoa, more, Lord. Can we have some of the ministry team to come and soak, Corey? Don't let her get back to her seat without prayer. And your name? Joanne Sewell. Oh, I forgot that. Joanne Sewell. Yes, and how did the Lord heal you? He healed my dreams. Um... I had a, a serious problem with depression, and um, there was insanity in the family. And uh, the Lord has delivered me o- over time, and last night he delivered my dreams. I used to um, have 
nightmares every night. And um, Todd is so good. Yes, he is. He's so good. What happened last night? I woke up several times during the night. And normally when I wake up during the night, I'm either fearful or um, depressed or under oppression of some kind. And last night I'd, I'd wake up and I just feel this wonderful peace. And uh, thank you, Lord. Yes, give him praise. <laughs> yes, Lord. No way. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you that you deliver the righteous out of every affliction. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you now for completed work in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Your anointing, Lord. More, Father. More, more, more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Katrina, could you come up? Katrina Wilson is here with Diane, who's face down on the floor again. And um, Katrina came as as her um, friend and companion. And Katrina is a minister in her own right, and written a book on dreams and interpretation. But she's going to give us a, revel, uh, a revelation that the Lord gave to her about the joy of the Lord. Good evening. Isn't it wonderful around here? Several years ago, my husband and I were on vacation. We had our two teenage children with us. And being a pastor, we always go to church at least once on vacation. So we were in Florida, the beach, and we decided to go to church on Sunday, and we cheated a little bit. We went to the beach during the day and went to a Sunday night service. Well, we drove about, a, we wanted to go to Carpenter's Home Church there in Florida, and uh, it's about an hour, hour and a half from where we were. So we drove there and got there, and the parking lot was just about full, and that auditorium seats 10,000 people. And I said, wow, boy, this church has some kind of Sunday night service. Well, we got in there, and uh, there was a minister there, and I had never heard of him. His name was Rodney Howard Brown. And you've got to understand, I, I, was, I was raised Pentecostal. And so I know about shouting, but I didn't know about laughing. And uh, we got there, and people were laughing right as we were walking in. It was pretty much the downstairs was full and part of the balcony because it seats 10,000. And people laughed and laughed and laughed. They laughed through the singing. They laughed to try to testify and would fall over laughing. The people behind us laughed so much they finally slid out of the pew and their feet went between my legs. And I reached over to my husband and I said, they're crazy. I said, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm very concerned about this church. <laughs> and I'm Pentecostal. You could jerk, you could shout, you could run, but you could not laugh. So uh, they, he talked a little bit, laughed some more, gave an altar call, and three or four hundred people came to the altar to accept Christ. I said, how could they even understand what he's talking about? And so he preached a little bit, and then he said, if you want this joy, I want you to come right now and get this joy. Line up. Well, people started running for the aisles. They have a massive uh, uh, front stage and people were lined up across that lined every aisle lined everywhere and there were 5,000 people there well 4,996 got in line there were four people that didn't it was my husband myself and our two teenagers the Pentecostals you know and he ran as he would just go, wham, joy, 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 like that, hitting people. And they would fall everywhere. And they would go in fetal positions. And they rolled and they laughed and they laughed. Well, we, they had told us earlier that the whole congregation, now, if you think this is a regular Sunday night, we usually don't get out till midnight. Well, our kids were going, ooh, no, we have another hour to drive. And they were all upset. 
Well, by this time, we had sat there until midnight, people rolling in the floor and laughing. We finally decided to leave. But how do you walk over 4,000 people getting out? So we finally, you know, uh, got our way to the back door. We didn't realize they were laying all over the foyer, and it's massive. So we're pushing the door, and we're pushing bodies out of the way. So we finally get to the car, and they're laying in the grass. And so we, we get to the car, and I told my husband, I said, be very careful. You may run over somebody and think it's a speed bump. And so... We're in the car, and we're finally, you know, driving down the road, and we were totally silent. And I said, God, is this really you? I don't understand. And so I decided to open my Bible. I don't recommend this for everyone, but I I just picked up my Bible, and I opened it up, and it happened to fall to Joel, the first chapter in the 11th and 12th verses. And I just started reading. I had no idea what it was going to say. I said, well, let's just see what the Lord would say from His Word. And I started reading. And this is what it said. The harvest is perished because the joy is withered away from the sons of men. And all of a sudden, the presence of the Lord came into our car and we began to cry. And the Holy Spirit spoke to us and He said, I'll tell you what has happened in this last day. My people have been so dry and so void that I have released my joy to them and it's been so long since they've had it, they didn't know how to react when they got it. And that's why they're doing what they're doing. And I said, thank you, Lord, for your joy. And I want you to know I have no judgmental spirit. I just thank God He has finally poured out His joy upon us, and I receive it, and I praise God for it. Hallelujah. 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 Well, glory. (laughs) Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. More Thank joy for Katrina, Lord. Lord. <laughs> More well, joy. Well, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> More joy, Lord. More joy. More Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> gal too. <laughs> Let me share this with you. If you have withered away, your joy has withered up. Your spirit man is crying out and you may not even know why you're here. And I want you to know I have had, uh, I've heard people say all kinds of things about uh, Rodney Howard Brown. We were in Egypt, in Cairo, Egypt. He had a tent set up. And thousands of Egyptians were weeping and laughing and rolling in the floor. And I said, oh, God, thank you. The joy is spreading around the world. And why not us? Why not us? Why not us? Why not us? us? Hallelujah. If you want his joy, come on down. Come on down. Hallelujah. (laughs) If she can stand up, come on. Come on. Come on. (laughs) Well, glory. There's joy in the house. Oh, oh. More, Lord. More. Oh, oh. More, Lord. Take it. 
Jesus name tonight we stand against the joy robber. Oh, and we declare the joy giver is in the house. Whoa! 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 joy. Whoa! The bride of Christ has been locked up too long. Whoa! What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Whoa! What are we going to do with all this joy? Whoa! Whoa! Jesus. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Whoa. Come on, ministry team. Where's our ministry team? Come on, ladies. Whoa. Whoa. Take it, Katie. Whoa. joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Whoa. Take it, Diane. Take it. Whoa. Take it. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa.
Tonight, the stones of bitterness, the, st- the stones of condemnation, the stones that the enemy has put inside of you, low self-esteem. He wants to just bubble up inside of you tonight. And this is what he did with me when I first came into renewal. He had to dig a deep hole in order to get out all of the pain of the past. Laughter displaces pain. Whoa! Can you ready? <laughs> Can you ready? Whoa. 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 Oh. Joy. 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 You know. We thought the Holy Spirit was a gentleman and he'd never do anything like this, right? <laughs> okay, back to business. This is your testimony form. <laughs> Not funny. You need to fill it in. All of you people who put your hand up that the Lord touched you last night. If the Lord touches you, you need to testify because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You keep testifying about your healing, the Lord can't steal it. Or the enemy can't steal it. Woo, got that one mixed up. (laughs) The enemy loves to come and steal our testimony. But we keep testifying, so... Fill out your forms, and there's a box out in the uh, lobby that you can just drop them off. And maybe we'll get you up tomorrow night, and you can testify. How many here are staying at the Sheridan Hotel, the Best Western? No, it is the Regal Constellation, one of those hotels. (laughs) How many are staying there? Hands up. I understand that they're going to evict you because it went into receivership and they're kicking everybody out on Wednesday. So, there's rooms available at the Hampton Inn. I need glasses, but I'm too vain to wear them. At the Hampton Inn, and it's the same price as you're paying at the Constellation, but you may need a car. 
Other than that, there's a number of hospitality homes that are available, and there will be a list of those in the um, lobby tomorrow. You can check on that tomorrow to get yourself straightened away by Wednesday. Um, order forms for the tapes. Uh, this week will be available tomorrow, too, in the Resource Center. You can pick those up. Okay. I get to advertise some, some of the goodies. Those of you that heard Mary Audrey this morning know she's an awesome teacher. Is that not true? This is one of her best series. It's called Born to be Free. Who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you. It's an eight-tape series with workbook. And um, for those that want to really know their position in the kingdom, I would recommend this book. I keep telling her she needs to start teaching this again here because at the beginning of renewal, we ran it once a week for like two years. And there was always like two to three hundred people in the classes. The mystery of marriage. It is a mystery too to some of us. <laughs> it's God's divine order. What Paul really said about women, things like that. The word kafali, what it really means. I'd recommend this to women who are really uh, stepping out in ministry to know. And also for those that, that uh, what are you girls doing down there? Oh, you're just hot. Yeah. The mystery of marriage. Spiritual tools for spiritual tasks. Get to the spirit. There's 21 tapes in this series. 90 minutes each tape. Three workbooks. But it's one of the most thorough vehicles I've ever seen for getting a really good, rounded view of what the gifts of the Spirit is. How many here have taken that? She's on the floor. Yeah. Quite a number of you. It's an excellent tool because it's not just just uh, teaching, it's practical too. How do you do it? What about this one? Exposing Jezebel. How many would like to expose Jezebel? Starts with exposing her in yourself first. And we all have some domination, manipulation, and control. Because it's something we learned growing up. You know, we we were in situations where we were controlled. And the only way to get out of that is control yourself. So it's identifying it in yourself first. And the only way to overcome the spirit of Jezebel is with humility within yourself. Moving in the opposite spirit. One of our best-selling, we've been around the world with this, and we can't keep it in stock. It's no sooner on the shelves than it's gone again. Because everybody wants to buy it for their sister or their husband. Right? <laughs> Not realizing they're buying it for themselves. And there's a bunch of other tapes out there, too, small series like this. There's, there's about seven or eight of them, Keeping Your Equilibrium, uh, Balanced. What's so funny? <laughs> How to Overcome Mental Strongholds. You can check them out yourself in the bookstore. Discover the River Within. This is one of the best reads you're ever going to How many have read this book? Changed the lives of women around the world from India to Australia to Norway because it's a balanced view. Mary Audrey's a balanced teacher. She's a woman of the word. You know, uh, um, Bonnie Schaub, who will be here tomorrow night, said that Mary Audrey was the Julia Child of the um, Christian world. She's got all of these recipes of scripture and the kingdom locked inside of her. And she just makes a new toss salad with every night. Her own variation, but always the basis is truth. And you'll read about Bill in here in his underwear. It's a good one. <laughs> read that chapter. <laughs> there it is. It's in the first chapter, right? Yeah. 
So how do we get some decorum back here? We'll be even more undignified than this for the Lord, won't we? You know what? It's because you're coming into freedom. Who really cares what people think? At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. It's what he thinks, right? Yeah. I think I've got my list covered here. How many like lists? I had to have a list. Okay. Ready to worship some more? Okay. Tithes and offering time. Another aspect of worship. Have the stewards, please. I don't know how you're going to get amongst these ladies here. Maybe we'll ask you to go back to your seats because you're closer to your purse that way. (laughs) Just keep blessing her. You guys ready to go? I just want to pray before we receive the offering. Father, we count it a privilege. We count it a privilege, Lord God, to give to your kingdom. Because we can't help give you, Lord. Father, as quick as we give to you, you keep giving us back. You keep giving back to us, Lord God, not in monetary, but in in blessings. You just keep pouring out blessings. So, Father, we just bless you tonight with our offering, Lord God that your word might go forth, that we see your kingdom come, we see, Lord God, your will established here in this city and around the world. So, Father, we just bless the gift and the giver tonight. And, Lord, I just pray you multiply back unto them a hundredfold in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Just around the corner is the Bel Air Hotel. And it's in walking distance to TACF, and that's a that's, um, fair, uh, fair rated hotel, too. So uh, you just go up this street here to Belfield and walk along about 200 feet. It's no more than five minutes walk from here. So we'll have that information available at the front desk for you tomorrow, too, okay, those that are at the Regal Constellation. Bless you. Thank you, guys.
Thank you. Bless you. I want to introduce you to Trish Bootsma, who's going to be our speaker tonight. Trish is on staff here with her husband currently. They're going to be starting their own church. They're going to be taking over and pastoring a church in Stratford, which is about an hour and a half from here. I think that Trish is prophetic of the church. She's a prophetic prototype. She just keeps producing. <laughs> there. Isn't that baby lovely? That's Gloriana. How old is she? Two months. Two months old. And there's five more just like it. You wouldn't well, believe it. A older, actually. <laughs> yeah, but I really believe that, that Trish is prophetic of the uh, church in that it's time for the church to reproduce herself. Bless you. Hey Amen. Just before you sit down there, we need to come come up here, Diane and Mary Audrey. You know, I was just observing this. I was feeling like this is this week is a bit of the invasion of the redheads. Did you notice that? <laughs> Hopefully, then you look at all your freckles. You're up. and then even Bonnie is redheaded. And what are we going to do with Curtis? Well, <laughs> so this conference is full of hotheads. Hopefully, not all hot air. But whoa! Thank you. You can sit down again. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you, Mary Audrey, for this opportunity. I just love this um, this joy. Thank you, Lord. Woo! You know, as that was all going on, all I could think about was Matthew 25, what talks about the parable of the talents, right? And where the master said you know, to his servants, multiply your talents, take them. And the two that did, the one that had five and the one that had three, and they multiplied them. And the the king said, come and enter into what? The the joy of your master. Enter into the joy of your master. And you know, there's something about using our gifts, using our talents, using what God has given us, that there's a joy about it. Have you noticed that? You know, it's like when, when we're operating in what God has called us to do and called us to be, there's just an incredible, like, Yes, I know, I feel, I feel his hand on my life. I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And there's a joy in that. And guess what? That's what this week is all about, isn't it? This week is about us entering into uh, the anointing that is on our life, the callings, and using the talents and using the giftings that he has given us and so that we can enter into the joy of it all and, and furthering his kingdom. And, oh, it's awesome. You know, um, this whole renewal, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, to me, is uh, has been an awakening of the gifts. It's been a m- number of things. Yes, the Father's heart and intimacy and all of these things. But it's also been like an igniting of giftings where the Lord is saying, okay, I'm pouring out the prophetic and I, I'm pouring out the evangelism. Whoa, hell, I'm pouring it out. Whoa, I'm pouring out the... The anointing to pastor and the anointing, whoa, to flow in his giftings because he's wanting us all, not just one or two. Thank God he's changing the model in the church because it's never been designed for one or two. It's always been designed for body ministry. Hello? Body ministry where you and I do the stuff together. We link arms and we do the stuff together. Whoa. Yay, Jesus. Woo! Oh, oh. <laughs> it's just kind of wobbly up here. <laughs> I feel a little weak bead. Okay. <laughs> hey. <We're laughs> okay. It's a great podium. <laughs> oh, you know, when I heard that Mary Audrey is having a conference in the uh, the fivefold ministry, I'm like, Yes, God, that was just so been burning on my heart is the, well, the emergence of the fivefold ministry that we would, we would take the gifts and we would take the offices and run with them. Whoa, every church should be operating in these capacities, you know? Whoa, it doesn't say anywhere that only the pastor, no offense to pastors, you know that, right? That's, <laughs> 
you know, if we really look scripturally, um, that it's it's operating together. So Ephesians 4, let's go there. You probably are going to go there all week, and that's all right. Over and over again. Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 12. Hey, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for what? The equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The beginning of the empowering. The empowering. So why? Why is God releasing these offices? Why is he releasing all these different offices? So that, what? So we can turn around and equip the body, but there's more to it. We're going to talk in a minute about the bride. And, you know, have you noticed that this is an all or nothing? Okay, this is an all or nothing deal. So either we believe that there's prophets today, or we don't believe there's any pastors today. You know, it's all or nothing. If there's there's pastors, well, then there's also prophets, and there's also evangelists, and there's also apostles, and there's also teachers. It's all or nothing. We've got to buy into this or don't buy into it. But it's certainly scriptural. You know, recently I heard C. Peter Wagner talking about the different offices, and he uh, he stated that the teachers have pretty much always been operating, okay, if you look at history. Uh, the pastors have been functioning in office capacity since the Reformation. The evangelists since about the mid-1800s with the rising of the great evangelists like Jonathan Edwards and Finney and Wesley and all these guys. And then the uh, the prophetic has come around the 1980s. Have you did you notice that a real resurgence of the prophetic in the 80s, where the Lord was bringing back that office into the church that had been largely ignored? And then the apostolic around the 1990s is what Peter Wagner was saying, and he was saying this. He said that this is the first generation in history with the realistic potential for completing the Great Commission. Because all the offices are operating and turning around and equipping the body for the work of the ministry. Whoa. There is a restoration of the offices primarily to prepare the bride for the coming of the bridegroom. There is a restoration of the offices primarily to prepare the bride for the coming of the bridegroom. And hello, it's not that far away. It's not that far away. All of the offices are now beginning to function. It's like some of them in embryonic stage, but beginning, beginning to function. You know, as we take our positions, as we do the work that we're called to do in walking out our giftings, in walking out if we're called to these offices or whatever function, whatever gifting, First Corinthians 12 giftings that we're used, that we're called to, In some way, shape, or form, indirectly or directly, we are preparing the bride for the bridegroom. When we give a prophecy, we're preparing the bride for the bridegroom as she looks up. Because prophecy is all about the testimony of Jesus. Revelations 19. As we're caring for them, as we're exhorting them, as we're pastoring them, as we're getting them saved, guess what? We're preparing the bride for the coming of the bridegroom. Because there really is a wedding to come. There really is a wedding that's going to be happening. Jesus said of John the Baptist that he was the greatest prophet born among women. Why? What did he do? Shout it out. Somebody tell me. He prepared the way. He prepared the way for Jesus. He prepared the way for the coming of the bridegroom. And as, you know, this, this profound statement that John the Baptist said about, I must decrease, so he must increase, it shows the hard attitude of what the Father is putting in his prophets today, and truly in the other giftings as well. But what, it's a hard attitude of, I want to be emptied of me, and I want to be filled up with you, and I just want to be poured out, poured out, poured out. I want to be emptied of, who I am and my desires and my wishes, whoa, so I can be filled up. You know, I felt like the Lord told me this in my journaling recently. He said this. He said, 
If you study carefully, you'll see every prophetic voice of me has lived a life of brokenness with blessing, humility with exaltation, barrenness with fruitfulness, tears with joy. The prophet is a divine paradox, one emptied of self to be filled up with me. Whoa. How many are looking just to be emptied of you (laughs) and filled up with him? You know what I felt the Lord spoke to me as I was sitting there during worship and he said, to me this, he said, Trisha, every person here tonight has come because they want me. And guess what? They're going to find me. Every person who has come, you've bought a ticket on a plane or you've driven or you come across town. Every person that has come tonight wanting God, you're going to have more of God when you walk out that door. Because he just so loves to pour out himself. Whoa, we don't have to twist his arm. Isn't that wonderful? I felt like in the beginning of the year, the Lord spoke to me and said that this was a two things. He said it was a year of transition and change and all of that. But he also said this was a year of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, I'm still learning what that means. But I believe that what he's offering us in an unusual measure is more of Him, more of His presence, more of... Whoa! Let's just close our eyes for just one second. Holy Spirit, come. Come and pour out Your presence right now. Lord, we hold out our hearts. Let Your glory fall. Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Let Your glory fall in this place. Whoa! Fill us up. Yay! We say less of me and more of you. Whoa! We want the real thing, Lord. We want to give out the real thing. We want to prophesy the real thing. We want to prophesy of your heart, Lord. Fill us up with you. We don't want prophecies that are us. We don't want the flesh. Lord, we want you. Whoa. Let your glory fall in this place. Yes, Lord. Yay. Yay, God. Yay. Yay. We celebrate you. You know, I just feel like doing a jig or something. I don't know. (laughs) I think it's that joy thing just keep coming. Whoa! Yay! Yay, God! Woo! (laughs) You want to fill us! Woo! To being continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Yay! We want the real thing. And you know, I always look at prophecy as this. I just keep seeing often in my mind's eye a big, huge reservoir of the Father's love and the Father's words. And, and, and you know what he, he's saying to you and me as we prophesy? Just jump, dip in there and dish it out. Just dip in and dish it out and dip in and dish it out. Because there's a never-ending supply of His words and of His love. He's just longing to talk to us. It's the Garden of Eden. Wanting to walk and talk in the cool of the day. Hey! Woo! <laughs> hey! Yay! Mm. <laughs> Woo! Ha! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh! Whoa! <laughs> oh! Oh! Hey! <laughs> I got a really good talk here, honestly, but yay! Whoa! Whoa! And I wore my sophisticated suit tonight. <laughs> so I could look proper. <laughs> oh! Hey! <laughs> oh! Whoa! Ah! <laughs> Where was I? Yay! Yay, God! Yay! (laughs) Yay! Whoa! Yay, God! Woo! (laughs) 
appreciate you. Woo! Oh. Okay. Yay! <laughs> Get my thoughts together here. Okay. Yay! <laughs> That's a good point. Whoa. Oh! Yay! asking the glory to fall halfway through your message, right? <laughs> hey! Oh, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love your presence. Yay! Ah! Hey! Woo! Ha! <laughs> oh, dear. Yay! <laughs> You know, uh, let me make a little, <laughs> okay, I'm somewhere, where am I? I am, <laughs> the great commandment, that was it. you know, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, the wave, the wave of his presence. You know what? That has been prophesied. Well, ah, let me tell you something. This is honestly what's going through. What I feel the Lord saying is that there's been prophecy over prophecy after prophecy over this place about the second wave, about the second wave. Well, and as I've been standing here, I feel like an unleashing of a wave from the back of the room to the front. Yay! Whoa! Ah! 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 Oh! Whoa! Ah! Woo! Ha! Whoa! And I feel his delight in the in the emergence of the offices and the releasing of the body. Hey! Oh! Oh! Whoa! This is a together thing. Whoa! Whoa! Unleash your wave, Lord. Yes! Whoa! 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 Hey, 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 hey! Whoa, 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 Yay! Yay, God! Oh, dear. Yay! Woo! Yay, God! Yay! 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 We receive it, Lord! We receive it! We'll receive it, Lord. We'll use our talents for your glory. We'll use our talents for your glory. Lord, empty.
empty me of me and fill me with you. Yes. Fill me with you. this week. This is commissioning time. You know, when David was anointed with oil by Samuel the prophet, it was when he was prophesied, you're going to be king. But then the, the actual happening, the actual time when he became, first he became king in Hebron for seven years, then he became king of Israel. But I feel like for some of you, this is the time of commissioning, where you have had your prophetic word years ago. Whoa! And now is the time to be released and to walk in it and to be king as God. Whoa! Father, awaken the dreams. Lord, awaken the dreams. Dreams that have been put on the shelf and gathered dust. Lord, awaken the dreams within us, Lord. We receive them. Yay! You know, I, I, I say about prophetic words, don't just put them on the shelf for rats. They're going to rot on the shelf. Believe them. Pray them into existence. Yes, God. Is this? I believe you said this over me. I receive it. I want it. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yay, God. Woo! There's a tenacity. There's a bulldog, you know, that he's putting within us to say, I want it. I want it. Yes. I want what you have for me. Yes. Yes. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take the wrapping paper off the present and I'll use it. Time to use our talents and multiply them. Yay! No more fear. No more fear. Woo! Ah! Woo! Woo! No more fear. Yay! What happened to the guy who didn't use his talent? He was afraid. And he buried it. Remember that? He was afraid. Who here has been afraid? It's okay to admit it. I've been afraid, okay? I've been afraid. Yes. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would remove fear. How? Right off in Jesus' name. The cross of Christ between us and that spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, Lord, where faith will rise up instead of fear. Faith, not fear. Faith, not fear, Lord. Whoa! Fear you go. We give you eviction notice in Jesus' name. We give you eviction notice in Jesus' name. Fear goes. Fear goes. Fear of failure, you go. How? Fear of man, you go in Jesus' name. Whoa! Fear of making a mistake, you go in Jesus' name. Fear of looking stupid, you go. Whoa! <sighs> fear of what others would say, you go in Jesus' name. Woo! <sighs> Whoa! Every type of fear comes off. 
every type of fear. Oh, because we're going to use our talents. We're going to use our talents. We're going to see what God has put in our hand. And we're going to say, yes, I'll use it. Whoa. Yes. Multiply it. Yay. Multiply it, Lord. Ah. Whew. Hopefully I still have a voice for the rest of ah, this week. <laughs> hey. Oh, yay, God. You're just wonderful. Whoa. 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 You know, during worship, I kept getting his name Sally. Or, or is it Sally? I think it was Sally. Is there a Sally here? Nobody? Anybody in this crowd named Sally? Just pretend you're Sally. Okay, no. Who's Sally? Seriously. You're Sally? Come on up here. Is that the only Sally? There could be more. Whoa! Ah. Hey! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, Sally, what I feel the Lord saying over you is that you're a brand plucked from the fire. Whoa! That what the enemy meant to destroy you. Whoa! That the Lord has plucked you out. Whoa! And he has put your feet on a high place. And I feel this in tremendous anointing for evangelism all over you. Whoa! I feel like God's going to be putting souls, thousands of souls in your hand. He says, whoa! What is it that you ask of me? What is it that you ask of me? Hey! He's extending his scepter to you. He's extending his scepter to you. Whoa! And I felt like him saying that every lie that you believed about yourself, that it's coming off tonight in Jesus' name. Every ah, ah, every lie coming off in Jesus' name. Everything, everything of unworthiness. Whoa. And the I can't. He's saying, I can. Can you say that I can in him? Whoa. Many, many, many souls. Woo. It's like this John Wesley in female version. Whoa. Yay, God. Let's give him praise. He's wonderful, isn't he? Woo! Hey. Okay. What? Hey. You know what? What I think the Lord is doing. In you and in me. Help. Is he is. Ah! <laughs> I can talk. Yes, I can talk. Yes. <laughs> Whoa! Woo! This is front row. I'm not looking at him. I'm not looking at him. Say, Whoa! <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? I feel like the Lord is making passionate, passionate, passionate lovers. Whoa! Because, well, <laughs> because in order to fulfill the Great Commission, something has to come first. What is it? The Great what? The Great Commandment. Yay! The Great Commandment about loving Him with everything that's within us, in our hearts, in our souls, our minds, our strength. Just loving Him, loving Him, loving Him, loving Him. Whoa! <laughs> and He's raising up passionate prophets. And passionate apostles and passionate teachers and passionate evangelists. Yay! And passionate pastors. Whoa! Hey! Because who wants to follow, you know, somebody who just doesn't even really like what they're doing? Whoa! Or doesn't like... Whoa! <laughs> Have you noticed in the workplace, if, if, if a worker really, really loves his boss, that, that he really tries to do a good job, did you notice that? Yay! Oh, but there's something about where, where Jesus is saying to you and you me, I want to capture your heart. I, I want to woo your affections for me. I want, I want you to be lost in love with me. Song of Solomon says over and over and over again, I, I'm lovesick. I'm lovesick. I'm lovesick. Whoa! Oh, where there's a fire burning, a fire of passion burning within us. 
And so that when we're called to go and to do and to be, that's just wonderful because we just love him so much. We'll just do anything he asks us to do. Whoa! We'll do it with all of our hearts and, and represent well, way, as ambassadors, our king. Yay! Because he's a king of love. He's the king of love. He's the king of love. Wow! More than your giftings and more than your talents and more than your, you know, what you can accomplish. He's capturing your heart. He's capturing my heart. Yay! Yay! Woo! Oh, I never knew you loved me this much. Woo! Yay! Ha! You know this ring? This ring, this diamond ring. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! (laughs) My other lover, my husband lover, gave me this one, but my other lover gave me this one. My lover, Jesus. Yay! And he spoke to somebody and said, give her that ring and tell her how much I love her. Ah! Broke me! I said, you love me that much? Yeah! Whoa, and over and over and over and over and over and over again. She's telling me, I just love you. I love you so much. Whoa! And guess what? When you know that you're loved, what do you do? You just love them back. You just love them back. You're so awesome. And so when we're asked of him in Matthew 22, 37, is the greatest thing, the most important thing, the best thing, the, put it in, the number one, number one, love me, love me. Will you just love me with all of your heart and all of your strength and all of your mind and all of your whatever, every, your toe, everything. You can do it when you know and how much you're loved. Because you got something to give away, amen? Yay! And when we prophesy, what is first, you know, first, Corinthians 12, all the gifts, right? 1 Corinthians 14, prophecy tongues. Have you noticed what's wedged in the middle? That's all about love. It's all about love. Yay! And when we're prophesying, it's all about love. It's all about a father who's lovesick for us, wanting to communicate his heart, wanting to share our destiny, yes, but more so he's wanting to share with you and me about relationship. You know, and the whole thing about the prophetic, it's not just I'm getting on the lines and praying for somebody. Oh, God, oh, God, give me a word. Please give me a word. No, 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 no. It doesn't start there. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. The prophetic back home in our closet when we're just just us and the Lord. And he's saying, I want to tell you how much I love you. I want to tell you how much you mean to me. And you know this little area of your life here, I I want to deal with that, and I'm going to take you through that. And don't worry, because you'll gain the victory, but, you know, it's all about relationship. Whoa! And then we get out of that prayer closet, and we can receive words. He wants to pour out words for our spouses and I give my husband prophetic words all the time. (laughs) He used to listen to about 10%, but you know what? He's up to about 90, 99, I'd say now. Yay! Let's say, yay, God. (laughs) Whoa, and he gives me words, and words for our friends and our kinship, and if we're released to do so in our by our pastor or whoever's in authority, then we can do it in the church, but it's a lifestyle. And guess what? We can all prophesy. And we can all evangelize. And we can all care for people. Right? Whoa. And we can all be sent out. So the Lord is saying, yes, there's the offices. Yes, there's those I've called. Guess what the difference basically is someone who's called into the office and someone who's walking in the gifting is often the ones that called into the office are the ones that are training up, raising up, multiplying that gift in other people. When you're seeing the multiplication, when you're seeing them raising up, training up, often that's an indication of the office. Yay! And there can be some other parameters of also being recognized in terms of um, you know, the body and blah, blah. But big thing is multiplying who you are, multiplying what you've 
been given. Because it's not about hoarding it, looking good. You know, I felt the Lord speak this to me in those in my journey one day, and it was kind of a serious word. I felt like the fear of the Lord entered the room. It was all about, he was talking to me about seeking him and about leaders seeking him and being in his presence. And basically he said this, he said, you know, those who don't come into my presence and lead others into my presence, I'm calling them out. And those who do, I'm catapulting because I'm getting serious. And he said this, he says, I want in my church. And I'm crying, let my people go. Let my people go into my arms, into me. If you don't lead them to me, I'll send another. If you fill them with programs and principles and practices and performance, it's dead works leading to death. Yay! Hope! But if you fill them with my presence, it's life. And new life bursts forth. Ah! Don't be fooled by numbers or supposed success stories or outward signs. I look on the heart. And I will no longer tolerate a dead church. I am calling you into life. Choose life this day. Choose life. Choose intimacy with me. Don't settle. Ah, I felt my hair was standing up in the back of my neck. And that would take quite a lot, you know. Seriously, I felt the fear of God come in the room. You need to judge that. But I felt like God saying... It's no more uh, jokes in terms of my church. I want my people in my presence. And I'm raising up leaders who take people into my presence. Because the people want me and I want them. Oh. Uh. Oh. Well. We are the message. You are the message. The evangelist, he's the message. She's the message. Yay! Ah, the prophet, she's the message. Whoa! 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 Because he wants you to live it ah, and then multiply it. Whoa! And then use it. Yay! How? 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 Whoa! I'm trying to get out a complete sentence, you know. Yay. I'm going to make a little confession to you. Can I confess something to you? Ah. I've been here for eight years with my husband. Actually, we've known John and Carol for many years before that. And I love this place. And I love what the Holy Spirit is pouring out here. And guess what he has made extremely clear through various circumstances. I'll talk about it, about hearing God through various ways this week. But he's made very, very clear that he's sending us out and saying, okay, I want you now to pastor a church and I want you to go and multiply somewhere else now because I'm sending you out. And I'm saying, I don't want to go. Here I am, send Mary Audrey. She do a much better job anyways. I don't want to go because I know that you're here. And you know what? He spoke to me one day as I'm driving my van, my eight-seater van that fits all of my kids in it. But anyways, I'm driving my van, and I, I'm listening to Mike Bickle on the tape. And he's talking about the Lord is our reward. And it was just like an arrow went in my heart. And he said to me, I am your reward. Not speaking, not position, not prophecy, not your gifting, not so that your face can be on some page. I am your reward. I am your pearl of great price. And guess what? I go with you. When you go, I'm going with you because I'm sending you. Oh, Ah. Oh. And you know, Isaiah 40 says this, Behold, the Lord shall come with a strong arm, and His arm shall rule for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him. In Genesis 15, 1, when God was speaking to Abram, and He says, 
Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. I am your reward, and I'll go with you. You know, in all of our lives, we're going to have ministry highs and ministry lows and life highs and life lows. But when we're connected in an intimate way with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and when we're in His presence, everything is okay. And everything is just going to turn out great. Because He's our reward. And you know, you hear about soaking in this place. And you're going to hear about soaking on Wednesday night. And I want to say something. Soaking has revolutionized my life. Because I wanted to get there. I wanted to get into that place of intimacy more. And, and, and I just... Ugh, can't work it up. Can't work my way in there. I found that out. I'm a good... I can know how to, My doer is fairly high. I know how to work. I know how to, you know, get things done. But... My doer didn't do anything for me, okay? It just didn't get me there. But where he comes, and when we take the time, and I feel like, you know, it's hard for achievers, but to just to lie on the floor and say, here I am. I don't want to do, I want to be. I want to be your child. I want to be your lover. And when he, we allow his presence to come and to saturate us and to surround us and his arms to wrap around us, we inevitably, especially day after day and, you know, week after week and month after month, we inevitably change and we become more like him. And if you want to be more prophetic, let me tell you something. Hang around the great prophet of all time. Hang around the one who does the speaking. Let him sensitize you to his voice. And there's something about soaking that sensitizes us to his voice. It sensitizes us to the Holy Spirit where we're just saying, come, come. I can't do it. I don't want to manufacture a prophecy. I want the real thing. Come and speak to me. Come and fill me. Sensitize me to your voice. Whoa, fill me with your love. Yay. Being before we do. Whoa. Hmm. And then we get up and we love him and we love others. You know, I laughed so hard. Stacey Campbell was talking about the officers and she was saying, you know what? The apostles, they just like big, you know, expansion. Their favorite word is more. That's the apostles. And, you know, the pastors, well, <clears throat> well, the prophets, first of all, they really, really love God. They love God, but they don't really like people too much. You know, just don't bug me, but it's me and Jesus. And then... And then there's the, the pastors, and they, they really love people, but they, the saved ones. And the evangelists, they don't really like, except for the lost ones, they really like the lost ones. And then there's the teachers, and they don't really like people at all, but they like the word. Give me the word. <sighs> you know what? All of us better be really liking Jesus. Yay. Because that's the first. And I feel like I'm saying, let the first be the first in your life. Let the first be the first in all of the offices. Let the first be the first. Let the first be the first be multiplied in everybody that we want to see, evangelize, and, you know, prophesy and care for and all these things. Because they're going to know us by our, by our love. Whoa. Let the first be the first. There really is a wedding to come. There really is. You know, Matthew 7, is it Matthew 7, 22, talks about, you know, when he's saying to them, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. And they say, hey, God, we prophesied. We prophesied in your name. And we cast out demons in your name. And he says this, depart from me, I don't even know you. You never took the time. To get into my heart. You never took the time to love me and let me love you and let me know you. Now, you know what know means in the biblical terms, right? That act of intimacy. That act of, that ultimate act of intimacy in the human realm is the marital lovemaking, right? To know Abraham knew Sarah. But where he's saying, I didn't even know you. You didn't let me in. I didn't have that intimacy with you. Oh God, oh God, oh God that we would not stand before him in the judgment day and say, hey, I prophesied, 
I cast out demons. Look at, all, look at all I did for you. Isn't this awesome? Step aside. I don't even know you. Ouch. Ouch. You know, I don't tell many people this because I, I don't know, you know, I, theoretically and all that, but there was a time about 10 years ago when I was taken, it was like this out-of-body experience, and I was taken into hell. And I saw, I noticed something. There was no children there. There was actually nobody there under 20. But I just remember seeing devastation, pain and despair and just every miserable thing that you can ever imagine. And I remember at one point seeing this guy, and I don't know how I knew, it was like a spirit would tell me that he was a pastor. He was a pastor. And he's like, what am I doing here? Depart from me, I never knew you. You know, there is a bridegroom coming back for a bride. But he's coming back for a bride that really, really loves him. And that really wants him in the heart of hearts. Ah! Hey! And this doesn't have to be a big sweat because just when we say, yes, I want you, (laughs) you're all sweating there, aren't you? I'm sweating too, but... I want you, and He will meet us. We heard earlier this week about the love that finds us. Hey! You know, I had this experience on the... My other baby, who's now three. How long have I been talking for? i got a few more minutes. She, she was due on the first day of the new millennium. And her name is Zoe. And I was uh, busy with Christmas and, you know, all these preparations. And then... Uh, on Boxing Day, which is December 26th here, all of a sudden I began to have these contractions. And I'm like, Ugh. my house is a mess, my bags are not packed, and, and I'm not ready. God, this baby's supposed to be due on the first day of the millennium. What's happening here? I wasn't ready. And I, you know, I'm really into natural childbirth and, you know, painless deliveries, praise God, all that stuff. But a big thing is being at peace. And I was not at peace. I was anxious. And and so I'm just like, oh, God, oh, God, please, 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 will you stop the contractions because I'm not ready. My house is a mess. I'm my bag's not packed, blah, blah, blah. I'm not psychologically ready. And, you know, he spoke to me at that moment. He said, how you are feeling now is how many of my people are going to feel when I come again. Because they know that I'm coming. They know the day is coming. But they're really not ready. And I'm like, Ouch. I think that's me. And I began to study things like Matthew 25 and the parables of virgins. And I noticed they're all virgins. Did you notice that? And they're all waiting for the bridegroom. Did you notice that? They're all Christians. They're all waiting for the bridegroom, for the wedding. But five were wise and five were foolish. Five had bought oil. Five had fallen in love and said, Holy Spirit, Teach me how to love. Teach me to put the first, the first. Ah. Well, I had this dream of, you know, the interpretation was it was Jesus, but this guy was looking for a bride, and there was all these incredibly beautiful women, and I just saw these, you know, just these incredible lineup of beautiful, amazing women, and there was one there that she wasn't even all that good looking. But, one thing that I noticed that she did was she looked him in the eye and she just ravished on him and she would touch him and she was, you know, just, you could tell that she was just so in love with him and she was just doing all this, uh, you know, looking him in the eye and just really, really caring for him. And I, the interpretation was easy. Where Jesus said, was saying to me as I woke up, he said, you know, that's me. I'm looking for a bride and I don't care how beautiful she is. I don't care how together she is or how organized or how good she is at this, that, or the other, or having all her ducks in a row, but I really, really care that she loves me and that she looks me in the eye and that she takes the time. You know, a lot of it is about time. Time in his presence. Whoa. I just feel like there's no shortcut. Whoa. 
in our prayer times, in our closet times. There's just no short. You know, you've heard that the longest way to get there is by taking a shortcut. You know, we can't shortcut Jesus and say, well, I've got this. I'm so busy. Uh, I'll, I'll meet with you later. And then it turns into tomorrow. Believe me, I know. Been there. Done that. I've had everything and anything come against my time with God because if there's anything the enemy wants to steal from us, it's our time with our Father, time with Jesus. Because it's that intimacy that feeds us. It's food for the soul so we can grow. We can go from glory to glory. So we can fall in love. So we can be the bride. Letting Him love us. Spending time in His presence. Yay. Yay. Oh, and it doesn't become a drag. You know, I used to sit there with my watch. Okay, I'm spending an hour with you, God. And I'm just like, oh, 15 more minutes to go. Who haven't I interceded for? And then I found out. <laughs> and then I found out how much he loved me. And then I found out how much I was starting to really awaken and loving him back. And then it's like, time is not a problem. <laughs> it's more like, oh, i got to get up to feed these kids. Okay. <laughs> yes, because we do have to do the things that we're called to do. But when we carve out, when we take the time to be with Him, we're just better at everything else we do. Do you know I'm a better mother today than I was before? Because even now I, I have the time with Him, but I'm much more patient. I'm much, I, I feel like He gives wisdom to how to mother. I'm asking for the anointing to be a mother. But He pours out so that we can be what we're called to be and do it with excellence. But we have to first get filled up with the gas so the car can run. Amen? Ah, the cry of the bride. He said to me this, I felt like the Lord said, do you want to know a little test for if you're becoming more like the bride? And I said, sure. He said, well, look at Revelation 22. In verse 17, it says, the spirit and the bride say, how much are you saying come? Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, come. Come, come into my time with you. Jesus, come. Come again in the clouds. Come again, Jesus. Can't bear to be apart from you. Come right now in my prayer time. Come right now in my closet because I just want to be with you. Come. How much are we saying? Come. Come, Jesus. I want to be like the bride. I want to be the bride. Well, oh, Second Peter three talks about Paul is admonishing us to be looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. We have the capacity to hasten the day of the Lord as we're watching and waiting and longing and loving Him. Quick little lesson in how do we become lovers? How do we get, like, how do I become a lover? First of all, one thing is to get healed up of some of the hurts in our life. Let me tell you a quick story. When I was dating, I always dated the wrong guys. I needed to be healed from judging my dad and saying, I'm never going to marry anybody like my dad, you know. And and in some sort of sick and demonic way, I always was attracted to the nasty guys, the guys that treated me badly. Like my dad had. And the Lord spoke to me one day, and it was really clear. He said, I, want, you're gonna, I asked him, who am I going to marry? You know, I'm just part of dating. And I felt like I'm saying John. I said, John, John who? John Bootsma. And I said, okay. You know, so I just, I had heard his name before. I'd never met him. Anyways, I don't recommend that for everybody, okay? Because sometimes you, <laughs> John Tanyan's laughing back there. Hi, John. And, uh, you know, I just felt like, okay, that sounds good. And then uh, I met this guy, and I thought, wow, okay, he's good looking, good, nice, tall, handsome, like that, that's good. And then we started to get to know each other, and I thought, you know what, I don't really like this guy. I, I, I wasn't attracted to him. There was no chemistry there. I was not in love with this guy. And I said, God, surely you're not going to have me marry a guy that I don't love. What's the deal here? And then an unfolding of events uh, was the revealing of how much healing I needed. And I went for some healing and, and went through the Sanford tapes and forgave my dad and got rid of some demons and got my heart healed up. And guess what? I took a second look at this guy, John, and I said, wow, I really love this guy. And 14 years later, I'm still passionately in love with my husband. 
But guess what? I needed some healing. And sometimes when our love level is low in terms of loving Jesus, sometimes it's because we need some healing. And because there's been barricades around our heart to protect us from being hurt. So when we, you know, we get forgiven and we forgive and, and we ask the Lord to kick out the demons and come and heal us and all of that, it really can make a difference in our love level. Worshiping. Something about worship that raises the barometer of our passion. It's like it connects us in. It brings us into the throne where we're just, ah, connected. Connected with Him. Have you had that? Coming in busy, you know, it's like coming into a service or at home, putting on the worship table. It dials us down and gets us into His presence. We become more passionate as we wait on Him and hear His voice. You know what Song of Solomon 5, 6 says this, I, my heart leaped up when he spoke. Oh, I love that verse. My heart leaped up when he spoke. And when we're learning to hear the still, small voice of the Lord, and when we're learning to hear him in dreams and visions, there's something about our heart that leaps up. Our passion increases when we hear his voice. You know, when we, when we give him our busyness, you know, fillers can take away passion. When we're so busy doing and TV, and this and that, and job, and meh, you know, busy, busy, busy. There's no time to be really passionate. Have you ever noticed in your marriage when you're really busy that you don't, like, you know, make love? You know, or, sorry, a second. Have you noticed that? I'm, come on. Let's be honest here. It's mostly women. <laughs> no, but it's true. But in, And it's like with Jesus, when we're busy, 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 there's little time for intimacy. There's little time for really knowing that affection and that love. Fillers. What are your fillers? They're probably different than mine. Fillers can be anything and everything that's not Him. And they can be good things, too. Well, but where we have the first, the first. And soaking, as I mentioned. Can I have the worship team come on? You know what I felt like the Lord said? I felt like we're supposed to have a fire tunnel of passion tonight. And... And, you know, um, I promised Mary Audrey wouldn't be too late, but we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Can I have you guys come and form a fire tunnel? And, and if there's anybody here on the prophetic team, John, can you come? And anybody on the prophetic team and on the ministry team, if you want to come, we're going to... You know, in Phoenix, uh, Diane, did you notice this? We were just at a conference with uh, Cindy Jacobs down in Phoenix last weekend. She called it a car wash. <laughs> So, car wash, fire tunnel, whatever you want to call it, we're going to ask the Lord to come. And and I'm going to ask you guys that are on the fire tunnel, I believe that the Lord will give you one word even. Are you guys listening, Juanita? And I feel like the Lord will give you even one word of prophecy. It's maybe one word, it may be two words, I don't know, maybe a sentence, but we're, you know, just to unleash something. So, be open to that when the Lord is just asking you to do it speak something over them. One time I went through a fire tunnel and I've been struggling with this, my boldness. And I'm like, oh God, my mouth is always getting me in trouble. I'm always putting my foot in my mouth. Oh God, how come you made me this way? And you know, I went through a fire tunnel and this guy, this prophetic guy said, oh, your boldness is from the Lord. Do you know what? That totally changed me. I'm like, yay God, my weaknesses can be my strength. Yay. Just, you know, use it better. <laughs> Get a little healed up. All right. So anyway, so we're going to do that. We're going to ask the Lord to even give us one word or, you know, one word of prophecy. So let's, come on, come on, come on. Mary Audrey, you know how to organize this, right? All righty. So if you want to, once you get through the fire tunnel, if you want to lay on the ground somewhere and just choose a, a spot just to soak in him, that's wonderful. Actually, we'll start the fire tunnel here. Is that all right? Start here. So that when you go this way, if you want to soak more, then go lay on the ground over there. And otherwise, be blessed. Go home. Go to your hotel and come back tomorrow morning. Well, let's just have a time of prayer for a moment. Holy Spirit, come and fill this fire tunnel. Yay! Come and fill this. And Lord, I ask of you, Lord, what you spoke to me, that every person here who's asked to have, have come for God, come for more of you, Lord, that you will give them you. And Lord, I ask that you would fill them in this fire tunnel. I ask, Lord, that you would 
cause the parameter of passion to just go up. A fire of passion to be released in us, Lord, that it would not be a drag to be found in the prayer closet, Lord, that we would long to be there to be with you. Betty, you're going to be a, are you going to be a dragger, Betty? We need some of these strong women to come and, uh, oh, there's some men right there, Betty, great, to help drag people through. Okay. You guys don't have to hold hands, by the way. That'll be, alrighty. Let's go. Woo! Passion, Lord, we receive it. Passion for you. Lord, unleash it. Lord, awaken it. Yay! Lord, we want to fall in love with you all over again. Yay! Pour it in. Pour it in, Jesus. Yes. Just lost in love with you. Love sick for you. Yay, God. Yay! Whoa! I've been asked to say one time through the tunnel or we'll be here till one in the morning. Yay! Pour it in, pour it in. Passion, Lord, we receive it. Lord, we want it. Yes, and Lord, I bless an awakening of the prophetic words that have been spoken over us in the dreams and the visions. Yes, yes.
you guys. I gotta drive a half an hour. I walk my dogs when I get home. I just want to close off with a blessing. Father, we thank you that you've loved on us today. We thank you, Father, that you've filled us with your spirit tonight. And Lord, you'll keep filling us. And Father, I pray that as each one is tucked into bed tonight, that your presence would come and just fall on them. And multiply their sleep, Lord God. Refresh their bodies. And Father, we thank you. You'll get us up in good time to get here tomorrow morning. To bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Good night. Let your mercies fall from heaven.